All right, back at the shop. Uh, I found box two of five. So the USPS, four out of five made it. This one did not make it. Uh, it came in a different box. It says repackaged by the post postal service. And only like three bags of the black sand from Washington made it from this box. But at least we got a lot of it. Um, it filled up my second bucket about halfway. So that should be enough for impossible bags for probably a couple months. So we're good there. Uh, we're back from Cripple Creek. And uh, today, the delivery should, should happen for the dust collector system from Grizzly. Uh, as soon as I got home, I was on the phone with, those, with uh, the T-Force Freight people. And uh, they should be delivering it between now and 4 p.m. So I've got like a, like it's right now it's one o'clock. So I'm gonna try to stick around the shop and just wait for this. Um, and then tomorrow, the delivery from Home Depot, which is the big Ingersoll Rand 80 gallon air compressor, that'll be here tomorrow uh, between before 10 p.m. Now this belt here, as you can see, it's wore down. Um, I measured it. I got 54 by 15 and I ordered a belt from Grizzly because the guy who sold me this told me that the replacement parts for this were identical to those on grizzly.com. So I ordered a replacement conveyor belt. The replacement's like 14 inches too long. So I had to try to figure out, um, either how to get a custom belt made or how to shorten a conveyor belt, because I've never done that before. And I, I did some calling around and I found a, a company that uh, can shorten the conveyor belt to 54 inches for me. So before I do that though, I'm gonna take this one off and we're gonna take this along with the brand new one from Grizzly over to the company, just to make sure that this one isn't stretched out too much or um, once I loosen it, maybe it'll shrink back or something. I just want to, I don't want to, you know, have them shorten the belt and then it'd be the wrong size again after paying, I think it's like $60 to shorten the belt. So we'll go ahead and re we'll um, remove this conveyor belt. We'll get that in the truck and we'll have that ready for when we go over there. Also, when I purchased it, when I was looking this machine over, I did notice the conveyor needed replacing and, and everything. So there's a piece down here that's really wore down from the belt can really see it there where the, the belt kind of chews chewed into it. There's one of those on both sides. This side isn't as bad. Um, and then these pieces here, these uh, screws, they're kind of, I can't, I, I don't know if the screw itself is twisted or if they're just turned slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen those up, but I just want to get this on camera so I can see how it was before. So when I try to put it back together, See, this one isn't even sitting in the thing. It's kind of like out. So hopefully that, that'll pop right back in, it should. All right, so we've got the one roller off. We've got the two brackets off and the screws out. Now, in order to remove this belt, it's not just gonna slide right off. We're gonna have to unscrew these two Allen keys. There's one here and here, these two Allen screws. And then we'll have to like lift this up temporarily, slightly somehow, and then pull the belt out. I think that's the only way we're gonna get it out of there. I never changed one of these before, so. All right, so <laughs> this is kind of tricky because now I have the floor jack lifting up on a bolt that's longer that I placed in here to lift up on this in order to slide this belt out. Um, and then once I get it out a little bit further, probably pull this side out, I'll have to get underneath here and put another piece in there to hold it up uh, to get it all the way out because obviously here, can't do that. All right, so the solution was get some wood under here stacked up. Once I had this out far enough, stack the wood up, get it right tight up against there and kind of pound it in there. Then loosen the tension and then I could just pull this out 
Still a little tight, but it's coming out. Actually, I can, um, I can move this over more if I needed to. But I'm doing this one-handed. Let me, let me just pull this out of here. There we go. Took a, took a little bit of engineering, uh, but we got it. And putting it back is going to be easier because I can set these up um, more centrally and we can hold it up once it's in there. So, <laughs> looks pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Super smooth piece of metal there. I could probably take some sandpaper to it just to smooth it out even more. So I'm gonna have the electrician come in probably this week. He's gonna hook up 220 for all my machines and then the air compressor as well. So once the air compressor's here and the 220's here, we can lower this table, have better access to it, and then I can actually smooth this out because right there I could feel the paint and it has to be perfect. And I, I mean, I know the conveyor belt runs over it, but while I have access, I might as well fix it, right? Now we're just waiting on deliveries. So just for comparison, before we go ahead and change this belt out, this is a brand new belt. See how nice and grippy that is? compared to the old belt just completely wore down we've got you know tears and stuff along the edges now honestly though this conveyor belt still has life in it still has a good amount of life in it but i figured you know i might as well change it out right in the beginning because i'm going to have to recalibrate it anyway so um it'll be calibrated for the new belt i'm probably more excited about having a new conveyor belt than most people but yeah it's a big deal all right well again it's already almost two o'clock i uh, t-force trans or uh, freight t-force freight they called me and they said uh yeah unfortunately we're gonna have to reschedule your thing i'm like dude do not do that again that's the second time because the first time they did it was the 13th and today's the 16th i waited patiently where's my damn package right so I told him, I'll just come pick it up, you know, um, let me know and I'll pick it up. All right, so I just dropped off both conveyor belts at a place called Purvis Industries here off Peoria in Denver. And on my way out here, I got a phone call from T-Force Freight. They told me that my delivery is on the way. So I've got to make it back home, which is all the way over in Golden. Hopefully traffic isn't too terrible. It's already almost three o'clock so rush hour is going to be happening here in a minute if it isn't already and uh yeah I, I dropped off the conveyor belts they said they can fix it for me which is great and let's go get our dust collector it's on the way all right driving through denver there's some sort of a sandstorm or something this is crazy it just happened All right, so after so much trouble with this T-Force Freight Company, um, I saw through my cameras uh, the, the guy dragging the skid up here to the shop door. I'm happy about that. I'm happy it's here. Um, but, I mean, long story short, I got in my truck. I was headed over to T-Force uh, headquarters to pick up this package because they told me that it wasn't out for delivery. And turns out it was on delivery. They just never scanned it onto the truck. So I drove all the way across town, dropped off that conveyor belt and figured I would pick this up on the way back. And then while I was out there, T-Force called me and said, yeah, it's going to be delivered in 20 minutes. I'm like, great. So that's fine. I do not have a pallet jack, but these boxes don't look too heavy. This is the two horsepower Grizzly Dust Cyclone Dust Collector. All right, so kind of working behind the scenes here. I just got this thing installed. And uh, I did install it with finished nails. Uh, however, the reason I have these GRK fasteners is because I can't, I can't uh, send a, a finished nail through this because it'll come through here and it'll be in the void here where the door is. So I actually have to go get some different GRK fasteners. That's why I backed this one out. Um, this was only, I only have one inch and two inch. The two inch would go all the way through. The one inch just barely goes, goes into it, just like this one. And just like 
all of those as well. So I'm gonna have to take those out, replace them with two inches, and uh, I'm just, I mean, not two inches, but one and a quarter inch. So I gotta go over to Ace Hardware, get some more fasteners, and then we can continue on this project, but it looks pretty good so far. All I need is this piece and that little piece right there. And I think my scraps, even if I do have to cut the fresh board to fit that, I mean, this is all still great usable plywood. All right, let's go to the store. Two and a quarter, one and a quarter. It's only nine bucks a box, and I'm gonna use this a lot, so yeah, that'll do it. Okay, we've got our piece over here. We have one final piece left until we have the entire thing um, done before being trimmed out and put molding on and stuff along the bottom. Because as we know, the floor is not even and the framing is, therefore we're gonna have gaps. So I'm gonna put you know, nice trim around the bottom. We're gonna put trim around the doors. And of course we have to put our door jams in first, then we'll trim out the doors. We're gonna do some molding around these little weird ugly corners and stuff. But uh, one thing that I, I really like, I would really like to have is a nice even, um, I want it to be flush with the door here. So when I put the door jam on, there's no weird weirdness, right? So how do, how do you cut this exactly, right? Well, you can't cut it exactly. So I rough cut it, and then I take the straight edge of one, the factory edge of one of the boards, and I lay it on top. I lay it on top of the piece that I cut, which is, you can see here, this is from the circular saw. It's not perfect. It's, you know, an eighth inch off. So I'm gonna clamp that down, take the router with a flush cut bit, and I'll ride that uh, bearing along here, and that'll trim it perfectly, making this side just as flat as a factory edge. All right, there we go. There's our bottom piece. It's gonna go over here. Nice flat factory edge. The router did a great job, and it's perfect. All right, there we go. Nice, perfect fit. I have a shim down here that I can kick a little bit to bring it up. It's really difficult doing this with one hand. All right, there we go. Nice, perfect fit all the way across. Now I just gotta tack it in here with one finish nail, and then I can put it in the uh, GRK fasteners um, to hold it to these skinny pieces. And we're done, man. All right, guys, so after I clean up and everything, I'll be done in here for the night. Spent most of the day in here, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, on the other side of these walls, we're gonna be able to attach the French cleats from the back to cover up a lot of these holes. Even though they're, they're, they're definitely not ugly, they're all countersunk and perfect and everything, um, they, they're still gonna be covered up. Same thing with these guys over here. I didn't take them out and replace them with the one and a quarter inch yet. Um, but when I do, it's gonna leave like an indentation from those built-in washers but I'm gonna be covering those up anyway, so with the French cleats. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, um, that's great, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.